this video, we will be going over and highlighting most of all of the menu options and settings that can help improve your game experience. Starting with character configuration settings ordered from top to bottom and then moving on to other general settings after that. Let's start with control settings, where under general you find the third person camera angle. This adjusts where your camera centers vertically on your character's location, which can be helpful to get a better view of the battlefield. However, I do recommend making sure you can still see your character's feet, just in case you are standing in something. Next, under the target submenu we have a handful of useful settings. First off, if they're not already toggled, you may want to turn on all of the outer target settings. I would recommend using line of sight as the target priority, although melee jobs may benefit more from the closest range option. The target type options relate to how your tap targeting works. Ignore depth simply flips through enemies from left to right. Cone will prefer closer enemies first. Now, the ground targeting settings are new additions added with Endwalker. I recommend taking both Limit Range Movement to Targeting Range, as well as Press Action twice to execute. The first makes it so that when aiming a ground targeted action such as White Mage's Asylum, the targeting circle is limited to the range you can actually place it in. The Press Action Twice feature allows you to press the keybind a second time instead of pressing your Confirm button. Finally. The Highlight Potential Targets option in the Target Display settings adds a yellow outline to whatever you're pointing at if you can target it. This can be helpful to identify targets in a crowd or even to locate your cursor. Now, the Filter submenu allows you to customize what things target cycling can target in detail, which I believe mainly concerns controller players. But it is also a very personal choice, so let's move on to the Character submenu. Here, at the bottom, you will find the Battle Effects settings. At lower levels, and especially smaller groups like dungeon parties, having everything shown usually is fine. But once you get up to high level and full party content, not to mention alliance raid content, it may be difficult to see what is even happening with all effects being shown. If you set party and others to show limited, then only things that you might need to see will be shown, like for instance other party members ground targeted actions, like a white mage's asylum. The exception is that you will always be shown limit breaks, which can, at times, be very inconvenient due to how blinding some of them can be. In rare cases, you may even want to set your own effects to show limited, which has the same effect, although if you're used to having some visual and audio feedback, this may feel a bit weird. Hence, I would recommend for most content to set party and others to show limited, and then adjust things on a case by case beyond that. And finally, for the control settings, on the mouse submenu, you can greatly customize how your mouse can interact with the game, with a heavy focus on how to incorporate your mouse wheel if you like. For instance, you can set it up to scroll through your party list or as an alternative to tap targeting. This is effectively the mouse equivalent to the whole filtering thing from before, and it is of course personal preference what you like, but this might otherwise be very difficult to find if you wanted to customize this, which is why I want to highlight it. Next, a much shorter section, let's talk about item settings. First, the inventory interface allows you to choose between whether you can see one, two or all four tabs of your inventory at a time. For retainers, you can only choose between one or two tabs, as they have a grand total of five tabs, plus some extra. There's no good way to make that look nice with four tabs at a time. Next, for managing new items entering your inventory, I do recommend turning off the Store all newly obtained items in the armory chest option. This means new equipment lands in your inventory, so you have an easier time keeping an overview over items you want or don't want to keep. And finally, the subcommand customization menu allows you to choose what choices will ever appear when you select an item. You could, hypothetically, completely remove the option to sell items if you like. You can also split up what things appear in the first list you see when selecting an item, or move them to a second tab you can flip to if you wish. You can also completely rearrange the order that the choices appear in if you like. There are indeed a lot of options. Up next, the UI settings, and let's immediately hop to the HUD submenu. Here, you can customize a lot regarding which UI elements you want to see, but what I want to talk about specifically is all the way down at the bottom. 
I recommend turning on the display target's remaining HP percentage option. This replaces the level of a target with an exact number percentage of HP when it is less than 100%. This is also the menu where you customize whether you would like to see full names or just initials in your targeting options. Now let's move to the party list, where I will start by recommending turning off the hide party list when solo option. You see, without the party list, it may be difficult to know how much barrier health you have specifically, so if you play a job that might utilize this, then you would probably always want to be able to see this. Here, you can also choose how many buffs and debuffs will be shown next to each party member entry. Just keep in mind increasing this can make this UI element very overwhelming. Finally, in the party list sorting, you can greatly customize how your party list is automatically sorted. Remember that the party menu has a sort party list option that utilizes these choices you make here. You can customize which order the roles appear in, and you can even make this decision based on which role you are. But the most exciting option here is that the role sort settings allows you to customize which order individual jobs will appear. Of course, each individual player has their own preferences on this subject, but just to give an example of how you could use this as inspiration, if you play Dragoon, then you may be utilizing a macro to help you target with Dragon Sight. This kind of macro could go down your party list from top to bottom until it finds a viable target. Usually, you would want to target a DPS with this action, so setting the party list sorting to put DPS first would already be beneficial for this macro. But after that, you could manually sort in the role sort settings to place the DPS jobs in the order you prefer to target them. So you could, say, place Samurai on the top if that is what you want. In a similar fashion, tanks might want to have macros that target their co-tank with cooldowns, so they would probably prefer to have tanks on top of the list. The display name settings are all personal preference, so let's jump over that to hotbar settings. With 6.2, a new option was added to display recast times, which allows you to center the numbers and make them larger, which I imagine a lot of players will find easier to work with. The three options below this one allows you to customize a bit how your hotbars look. First, hiding unassigned slots can be nice for some UI setups, and displaying the exact hotbar numbers next to your bars are likely most helpful while you're making keybinds. And the enable hotbar cycling button I would recommend turning off if you're not using it, as that will remove the possibility of hitting it on accident and swapping your bar. And the sharing submenu allows you to customize which hotbars are job specific and which ones share across all jobs. Players with a lot of fancy menu macros might find this very convenient to have access to more storage hotbars on classes, while I imagine most other players will be fine with keeping just the first three bars job specific. The cross and custom submenus contains a lot of controller options I cannot speak on, so let's quietly skip over those. In the log window settings, I would recommend adding timestamps to your chat logs under the log details submenu. Additionally, if you are the type of person to sometimes miss it when people write in specific chats, you can add sound notifications whenever certain chats are activated. Although, I believe anything except tell and maybe emotes targeting you are the only ones that would not get overwhelming. Now with the character configurations out of the way, let's quickly move to the last three. Have you ever experienced content with an extra button on your screen that you can use as an action? This is called a duty action. Open your keybinds, choose hotbar and scroll all the way down. Here, you can choose keybinds for these up to two duty actions, making it easier to access them. Next, helpful HUD layout options. First, status effects. Older characters that predate this option will not have this set by default, while new characters will. Choose the status effects element and click the cogwheel. Here, you can split up the status effects in multiple sub-elements, allowing you to separate your jobs, buffs and other elements if you wish. In fact, similarly, you can split up the targeting bar, allowing you to move the debuff list on them to a more convenient place if you are a job that applies damage over time effects, for instance. Now, select one of your job gauges and press the cogwheel. 
The switch job gauge to simple mode simplifies the gauge to a much smaller element that only contains the specific things you need to see. For some jobs, these simpler gauges are far easier to read than the fancy gauges, a prominent example being the white mage's lily gauge. And before I move on, I would just recommend that, if you are a job with any actions that can affect your party, it may be helpful to move your party list to a spot where you are more likely to see it, so you don't miss out on an opportunity to raise someone as a red mage, for instance. And finally, I imagine you may already have seen this feature added in 6.2 as well, but open your actions and traits menu. In the bottom right, you can toggle to a more detailed view. This visualizes all the specific combos your job's actions fit in, and also stacks actions that operate into each other, on top of each other, to avoid confusion. How would you be supposed to know that Rage of Halloween upgrades to Royal Authority of all things? Personally, I like to use the more compact view when placing actions, but this detailed look is helpful for getting an overview of your job. So just remember that it is there. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found any of the tips helpful or interesting, please consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe and toggle the bell option to get notified when next I post a video. And if you have any questions, anything to add, or something you would want me to know, please leave a comment. Fun fact, while the HUD layout options allow you to customize most of your HUD, for some reason some things are only in the UI settings and some are only in the HUD layout. For example, both can hide elements, but to add multiple clocks you need the UI settings, and to resize elements you need the HUD layout. Except for elements that aren't always open like your inventory, you can resize them by selecting them with right click. UI setup really can be confusing, 